To download applications on your iPad, you will need to set up an App Store account first. Tapping the settings icon, you will find Store at the bottom. Tapping this will give you the option to sign in using an existing account or to create a new account. If you do not have an Apple ID, tap Create New Account and you will be prompted to enter the necessary information about yourself, including name, contact information, as well as credit card info. Here, I'll select to sign in using an existing account, and this will ask you for your Apple ID and password. Once this is complete, tap OK to confirm or cancel to exit. Here, you have the option to automatically download new purchases, including free downloads you have made on other devices, such as on your iPhone or iPod. Your Apple ID must be the same on all devices for this feature to work, and you will not be charged for the additional downloads again as long as your Apple ID is the same for all devices. To activate this option, simply tap the toggle on-off switches for each. By default, this feature is turned off. Just below is the Apple ID you are signed into. Now that we are signed in, we are ready to jump into the App Store. Tapping on this icon will launch the App Store. The store is organized by six main sections. First is the Featured section. Here, you will find the most recent featured applications in the App Store. The next option is Genius. Genius is a feature that analyzes the apps you download and will suggest applications based on your liking. The button on this page will activate the Genius feature. The next section in the App Store is Top Rated. Here, the applications are organized by Top Paid and Top Free, as downloaded by App Store users. The next App Store section is Categories. Here, you can find applications categories such as Books, Business, Medical, Navigation, Games, News, and much more. The next section is for Purchased Applications. Here, you can find all the purchased applications you have downloaded from the App Store. Finally, the last section is for updates available for applications you have on your device. This section makes it easy to keep all applications on your device up to date. Updates come out frequently, so we recommend you check this a few times a month. Each one of these sections is organized in the same fashion. Jumping back to featured applications, along the top is a slideshow of featured applications. Just below are featured applications that are new and noteworthy. Continuing down the page, you will find the staff's favorite applications. Finally, along the bottom, you will find options for account information and support, as well as quick links to groups of applications you can browse. Returning to the top, you can find sort options for the page. By default, the Featured section opens sorted by the newest featured applications. You can also choose to organize by what's hot and release date. If you know of a specific application you want to download, the search bar is the best way to find it. Here, I'll search for Pandora Internet Radio. And as you can see, it appears at the top of the suggestions. Tapping on the result will launch the search results page with applications first sorted by relevance and then split into categories for iPad and iPhone applications. If you can't find the application you search for, you can also refine your search results at the top. To open the applications page in the App Store, simply tap on the result you want. Along the left side of this page, you will find information about the developer as well as information about the version of the application. You can also find an option to go to the developer's website. 
find app support, as well as the license agreement. In the top section is a description of the actual functionality of the application you are downloading. Tapping here, you can expand the section to read additional info. Below this is the screenshot section. Here, you can find in-app screenshots to give you a better idea of what the application is and how you should expect it to look. Scrolling down, you will find customer reviews and ratings. And at the very bottom, suggested applications for you that others downloaded who also downloaded Pandora. Make sure that if you haven't done so already, you read and agree to the terms and conditions of the App Store. If you do not agree, you will not be able to download any applications from the App Store. Once you tap Agree, you will need to confirm your response. Tap Cancel to exit, or Agree to accept. Once you're finished, tap Done. To download the application, tap on the Install button directly below the application thumbnail. With paid applications, this will say Buy before it says Install. The application will download on your home screen and appear at full brightness once the download is complete. On your iPad, you can customize screen brightness and wallpapers. To access these settings, first tap on the settings icon. From the settings menu, select brightness and wallpaper. At the top of this screen, you can customize the screen brightness. By default, this is set to auto brightness. To turn auto brightness off, tap the on off toggle switch. Once brightness is turned off, you have the ability to adjust a static brightness using this bar. Slide your finger to find the brightness level of your liking. Since auto brightness works very well, I'll enable it again. Now, the device will adjust its screen brightness automatically based on the light surrounding it. Just below screen brightness are the wallpaper settings. Tapping on this option will open this page with options to choose a preloaded wallpaper or to select an image from photos you have saved. Tapping on wallpapers will display the 30 preloaded wallpapers available on your device. To preview a wallpaper, tap on its thumbnail. Along the top of the preview are options to set this image as your lock screen, home screen, or both. Here, I'll select this image as the lock screen. This time, selecting another wallpaper, I will set it as the home screen wallpaper. As you can see, the thumbnails for both screens are updated here, and both the lock screen and home screen have updated accordingly. To customize sounds and notifications on your iPad, access the settings menu, and near the top is notification settings. At the very top, you have the option to turn notifications on or off. Notifications include alerts such as new emails, calendar alerts, application updates, and more. If notifications are turned off, the list of apps with notifications will disappear. Turning notifications back on, they will reappear. Accessing general settings and selecting sounds near the top will open this page. At the top, you can adjust the notification sound level just as you did with the brightness slider before. Directly below, you can enable and disable different sounds using the on-off toggle switches. The options are new mail, sent mail, calendar alerts, 
lock sounds, and keyboard clicks. By default, all sounds are enabled. Once you have downloaded applications and you are starting to customize the look of your iPad, you may want to customize and organize applications on your home screen. To move an application, press and hold on the screen until all icons begin to shake. Now you can drag applications for placement. Holding the app along the edge of the screen will move it to the next home screen. After dropping the applications, a single tap on the home button will finalize the change, freezing all icons again. If you want to move an icon into the frozen panel, simply drag and drop it into the panel. Again, tapping the home button will freeze all icons. To move an icon out of the frozen panel, use the same process. On your iPad, you can also create folders to further organize applications and utilities. Dragging one icon and dropping it on another will create a folder with the two. Your iPad will insert a relevant title or you can rename it if you'd like. Here, I'll rename the folder Media. Tapping the home button will lock in your changes and tapping again will close the folder. Now, if you want to add any other applications or utilities to the folder, all you need to do is drag and drop them in the folder. If you want to remove applications from the folder, simply drag and drop the apps you don't want in the folder back onto the home screen area, then place it where you'd like. If you remove all applications from a folder, the folder will automatically delete itself. Again, press the home button to finalize your changes. When you press and hold on an application, making all applications unfrozen able to be placed, you will notice an X in the top left hand corner of some icons such as here with Pandora. Tapping this X gives you the ability to delete the application from your device. Tap delete to completely delete the app from your device or cancel to return to the home page without deleting it. Here I'll delete it. Again, press the home button to finalize your changes. 